Hi, and welcome back to our discussion about the Industrial Revolution. Earlier this week, you should have learned what the Industrial Revolution was, as well as starting to understand the impact that it is going to have on cities. As we continue that discussion this week, we are going to focus on today, how did the Industrial Revolution affect people? Your job is to watch this entire video and then email me a response showing that you've watched the entire video and the several examples that I'm going to be giving you about how this is going to affect different groups of people. As we talk about the Industrial Revolution and how it affects people, I want to give you some context or give you a big picture of where is this exactly happening in the United States. By looking at this map, you'll notice that we have some of our formal states here on the East Coast or in the eastern portion of the United States that are here in pink. You'll notice that places such as Wisconsin do not yet exist. Um, this includes our bigger cities such as Chicago as well. So again, we're really focusing on bigger cities when we talk about urbanization such as New York City and Boston. These are our places where industrialization is going to hit the most is in this northeast center of the United States. When taking a look at industrialization and urbanization, we really want to focus on where are all these people coming from? And why did people start moving to these cities? And so as we take a look at this graph, for instance, you'll notice that in the 1860s, so the Industrial Revolution has already started at this point, but we still do have a good majority of people, about 25 million people who are living in the countryside or living in rural life. So think of this as still farming or that you have neighbors who are few and far between. You're going to see a switch and over those next 60 years to this point, 1920, in which we finally reach this point where urbanization or people living in cities is greater than those who are living in the countryside. Um, as we take a look at those who are living in the cities during the 1920s, we'd say it's about 54, 55 million people who are now living in the cities compared to that 5 million people who were living in the cities just 60 years earlier. And so I want you to start thinking about our brainstorming ideas of how would this impact people if in 60 years I went from 5 million people in cities to 55 million people in cities. So again, that increase of 50 million people that used to live in the countryside who are now living in these cities and how that's going to put some pressures on those cities as well as expanding life or changing life as we know it within those cities. As we continue to talk about the Industrial Revolution, again, the big focus of the Industrial Revolution is on the inventions that are going to be created. Now, a lot of these inventions that you see here are going to be created for the purpose of efficiency or making people's lives easier. Some of these inventions we no longer use or we have modified so that you would no longer be able to recognize them. Other inventions we still use today and we've made a few changes to, again, for that purpose of making our lives easier or a little more efficient. Some of the inventions that we still use today that I'm guessing you recognize are things such as what we once called the steam-powered locomotive, which has turned into the train. We also use ships still to ship bulk goods as well as the light bulb. However, there are some, such as those within the textile industry, such as the spinning jenny and the cotton gin, that we no longer use or we have changed and modified just enough that you would no longer recognize them. One of the best examples, I think, of a, an invention of the 1800s that we no longer use is the telegraph. Again, this is one of the first forms of communication for people not only in the household next to them, but also spreading out to other areas of that city or throughout those states. Um, the telegraph was this means of communication for people. This has then transformed into what you and I use for technology today, such as things with email and the internet and cell phones, um, text messages, social media, that now it's not I can, you know, send a message to somebody, but I have to wait a while for it to come back, but I can instantly see what somebody is doing all the way across the world. And so this is the reason why some of our inventions were created, but then also developed throughout the last 200 years. Again, it's that point of efficiency or making people's lives easier. Some of the people in the United States who took advantage of this making people's lives easier were people who we consider private investors or who had the money and the means, as well as the motives, to take hold of companies that were not in existence before. So once we discovered oil, for instance, in the 1800s, you are going to have this man named Rockefeller who is going to put a monopoly 
or create a monopoly on oil. This essentially means that he had the means as well as the motives to own a good majority, if not all, of the oil business here in the United States. Again, there are no regulations or rules during this time that tell him he cannot do this. Um, and so a lot of times what would happen is he would charge really high prices until other companies started to come into play. And then he would drop his prices dramatically. People are always looking for the best price. And so they would go and buy from him until he ran those other businesses out. The same thing happened here, and this man's name is Andrew Carnegie. He is going to have a monopoly on steel during the 1800s. And again, same idea that he is going to really control the entire business of steel within the United States during that time. Many of the examples that you would see throughout monopolies, such as the electric companies or the railroads, are also exa examples of monopolies that are going to happen during the 1800s. Again, private investors are going to benefit the most, or these monopolies are going to benefit the most from the Industrial Revolution, as well as the resources that are going to be discovered during this time. This is not going to be the same for everyone, as you can see in these pictures, as well as the pictures I'm going to show you in the next slides, is that this is also going to create a lot of pollution, not only in the air, but also on land and in the water. In addition, we're going to see that you are going to have very cramped living quarters for people or people who are in close proximity to one another. I know this is an idea that's hard to fathom right now, especially with the Safer at Home Act of so many people being in one spot. But this would be the equivalent to what we would see in downtown Milwaukee. Again, you have your apartment buildings that are very close together, as well as a lot of people who are in close contact. So really when we talk about the Industrial Revolution, we have our two big groups. We again have those private investors, the people who are richer and afford, can afford to start their own businesses or run their own businesses, such as those factories. And then you have your lower classes, and your lower classes are the people who are going to work within these factories. A lot of times, the whole entire family would work. And so again, you can see here that this young boy, we're going to say he's maybe seven or eight, is also working within the factories as well as his parents. You'll notice that he is not going to have any protective gear on as well as he's not even wearing shoes to be working with this machinery. So again, we talk a lot about due to moving to the cities, that family life is going to change because people are going to be working longer hours in horrible conditions. Um, thanks to the light bulb, people would now be able to not only work from sunrise to sunset, but extending those hours past. And so you might see even children, for instance, who are now working like a 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. shift with only a little lunch break in between. Even though you are going to have all of the family members who are working in these horrible conditions for very long hours, their pay is going to be very, very poor. And then with that, you're going to see what we have now named the slums or a lot of these rundown apartments that are then going to develop during the 1800s. Again, people are going to be in really close contact to one another as well as um, that the conditions are not going to be the greatest. You might see a one bedroom apartment for an entire family if that during this time. Moreover, as we talk about the effects on cities, recognizing that when people move to the cities that they're going to bring all of their belongings with them. And that included any livestock. Now, people weren't regulated or told what they had to do with their livestock, and so if children had to go to work during this time, that livestock would just kind of roam free in the streets. In addition, if that livestock decided to go to the bathroom or take a nap, or if this livestock died, there were no companies or no city workers that were going to then come and clean up for them. Um, this included any type of sanitation. So again, there are no city garbage workers. There is no sanitation system. Um, thinking of clean drinking water, nothing like that. And so you're going to see a lot of outbreaks of diseases during this time, as well as just thinking that people are living through this, right? Walking up and down the street, seeing these things. And again, this is a reality of the Industrial Revolution for a lot of people during this time. As we continue to talk about the Industrial Revolution, recognizing that we just talked about or we've really spent a focus this week on talking about the first two Industrial Revolutions that are happening during the 1800s. 
many of you have not recognized or not been through or had to live through this third industrial revolution, although you've seen the benefits from it, much like the first and second industrial revolution. However, you are living through this fourth industrial revolution right now, this idea of intelligence. And again, this is what are we doing with machines to make our lives easier? So it could be that idea of a self-driving car or being able to have a watch that's going to tell you what your cell phone is saying or help with your health. Again, these are things for efficiency, um, but you'll also start to see some machinery or start to see some inventions during this time that are really trying to combat some of that pollution or some of the mistakes that were made in our earlier industrial revolutions. And so we will continue to talk about and discuss what do those inventions look like of our modern times. Again, as we reflect or go back to our essential question, um, what I would like you to do is email me a response to this essential question of how did the industrial revolution affect people? I would love you to be as specific as possible by telling me about the different groups of people that I talked about, as well as how it is specifically going to affect them during this time. Your response should be at least five sentences long, giving me examples and details from this entire video. And if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out either on WebEx or via email. Otherwise, I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.